I'm happy to say Tim Gregory joins us from the UK. <laughs> you must bang your head against the wall when you look at the way Australia deals with this discussion. We're not even prepared as a country and a government to sit down and talk about it properly. Slightly, although Australia is not alone. There are lots of countries, including countries in Europe, that have a very strong anti-nuclear sentiment running through not just the electorate, but also the governments as well. And so Australia is not that different in that respect. And one of the things about nuclear power is that it's not really about nuclear power per se. It's about energy abundance and preserving the natural environment. Societies need enormous amounts of energy reliably in order to grow their economies, to raise living standards and to flourish. And to provide that energy without wrecking the environment is one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century. And for me, I don't really care where that energy comes from. I just happen to think that nuclear power is one of the best tools we have for bringing about that future. Renewables are great, they can get you started, but they're not enough on their own. You need that reliable, potent nuclear energy to compensate for the unreliability of wind and solar. Like you, I'm agnostic. I mean, Australia's got a lot of sun, uh, a fair bit of wind, we've got coal, we've got gas, and we've got uranium, and we've got water, but we don't have too many mountains. So, you know, hydro's not a, a, a big deal in this country, but can you understand why we have such a reluctance to, to go down this track? I mean, I just get a depressing feeling that it's never going to happen here. I mean, you've had nuclear power in the UK for a long time. So what's the new push? What, what's going to happen uh, with these, these new nuclear push? So it was a fortnight ago that the British government announced that it's going to be building a new nuclear power station down in the south of England called Sizewell Sea. And it will take about 10 years to build. And there was a few raised eyebrows at the kind of time scale that it would take to build that. But it's a 3.2 gigawatt nuclear power station. It will provide about 10% of the UK's electricity. That's 10% from a single power station. Cool. And so there's a growing recognition here in the UK amongst government and the private sector and the public as well that nuclear power has to play a part in the future of our energy mix. And it's very interesting because we often hear about these kind of these, these rife anti-nuclear sentiments here in the UK, but actually the polls, the data show that about 50% of the British public either strongly support or tend to support nuclear power. Fewer than 10% of people strongly oppose it. And so the data show it, and it's been my, my own experience going out there talking to people, that not as many people are as anti-nuclear as you would think. It tends to be a very well-organised and vocal minority of people. That's a big plant the UK is going to build. I mean, is there technology of smaller plants that could be built more quickly? Yes, so these small modular reactors are getting people very excited. These are unlike the giant gigawatt scale traditional power stations are, as their name suggests, small. They're miniature. They can fit where no traditional power station could. And the modular part of the this, these new reactors is key because the idea is that you could build upwards of 80, 85 percent of the reactor on a factory line. And of course, we know from the history of industrialization that when you build things on a factory line and mass produce them, not only do time scale shrink, but so does the amount of money that you have to spend. And so the idea is that these small modular reactors can be rolled out at scale and at pace. And I envisage a future where not just in the UK, but, but around the world, every single small city, large city, large towns has at least one small modular reactor providing the electricity and the heat that those societies need to flourish. Well, Tim, let's hope your book causes uh, another a new debate in this country. Thanks for joining us tonight. By the way, Dr Tim My Gregory's pleasure. Thank book you. is called Going Nuclear, How the Atom Will Save the World. You should get your hands on it. Tim, thank you very much for that.